God whom we could know would be no God. If we could understand every Leela of God, there would be no difference between us and God. We discussed that the third manifestation of the Supreme Divinity is as Bhagavan, where he manifests his Naam, Roop, Leela, Gun, Dham, and Parikar. His associates as well. <coughs> so that manifestation is the sweetest as Bhagavan. It is the closest realization of God. However, the catch is that Bhagavan is not easy to understand. Right now, we can all understand the Murti. Radha Krishna are standing there, we do pranam. However, when Radha Krishna were pratyaksh 5,000 years ago, we were also on this planet very lightly. We also saw God quite lightly, but we could not understand. This is Sri Krishna, yes. What kind of God is he? He is running after the gopis. He is not God. It's possible we were in the Ram Avatar as well. And we were asked, somebody told us, this Ram is Bhagavan. We said he is Bhagavan, but he hid and killed Bali. What kind of Bhagavan is he? So the highest bliss you get from Bhagavan but his pastimes are difficult to understand. Why are they difficult to understand? Because we try to comprehend them with our intellect. Our understanding faculty is the intellect. The intellect is limited and it is material. God is divine. He is beyond the realm of the intellect. So, even in the world, we can only understand something to the level of our comprehension. One boy came back from school and said, Papa, I am not going to school. The teacher is very bad. The father said, what did he do? Yesterday he was teaching 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. Today he is teaching 6 plus 2 is equal to 8. This teacher keeps on changing, I am not going to go to school. Now the teacher is perfect, but the student's comprehension is limited. Similarly, when we find defects in Ram and in Krishna and in Shiv and in Radha, we are only expressing the pride of our own intellect. So, what we need to understand is that when we come in this world, we do karma. Karma is material activities. And when the Lord comes in this world, He does leelas. Leelas means divine acts. So, who does Leelas? Who has no need for happiness? He is already an ocean of happiness. Now, we have need for happiness. Why do we have that need? Because we are parts of the ocean of bliss. We have not yet got the bliss that our soul is seeking. And hence, whatever we do, is motivated by the desire for our bliss. However, God is perfectly blissful. And any saint who has attained him has also realized his bliss. So such God and saints have got no need to do anything. Now whatever they do is not self-motivated. 
बट विद द इंटेंशन ऑफ जीव कल्याण द वेलफेयर ऑफ द सोल्स हेंस वेन गॉड कम्स ही डज डिवाइन एक्ट्स जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम दोज डिवाइन एक्ट्स आर लीलास now if we could understand every leela of god there would be no difference between us and god then we would become god if god was comprehensible to our intellect f a jacob b said god whom we could know would be no god the bible says my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts for the heavens are higher than the earth and so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts and my ways higher than your ways to quran sharif says wa lillahi ghaibus samawati wal arzi ya ayyuhu wal ladin e iman walo zameen और आसमान के भेद को अल्लाह मिया खुदा वन ताला के अतिरिक्त कोई नहीं जानता तो गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब से इस तुम्हरी गतमित तुम ही जाने माय लॉर्ड योर गति एंड योर मति यू अल ओन कॉम्प्रिहेंड एंड इफ यू ग्रेस समवन दैट पर्सन बाय योर मर्सी कैन अंडरस्टैंड यू दैट इज वाई if we are not able to understand the leela of god we should never declare this leela is wrong we should say i am not able to comprehend it today but tomorrow when my sadhana reaches that level i may be able to comprehend it so let me put it aside for now this is the humble approach when we have this approach we see god his forms his leelas his past times etc as divine and when we see them as divine we can easily engage in devotion and elevate ourselves so that is why if we want to take advantage of bhagwan let us keep that divine sentiment and engage in his devotion so let us move on now to the next one so kripalu ji maharaj is drilling into our head the concept of brahma parmatma and bhagwan now you think i have understood it swami ji but as a teacher i'll tell you within 3 months 50% of the people will have forgotten so we should not be careless we should not overestimate very often we are only hearing through the eyes we are not even hearing through the ears we must apply ourselves to the task of actually listening actually listening means you take it in and then contemplate over it and let it all get clarified those ages and ages of darkness of ignorance from within let it be dispelled with the divine knowledge so we must apply ourselves to this task this is one aspect of the practice of bhakti the shravan manan nididhyasan of tatva gyan now there are so many paths people they heard my lecture for four years then i said where did you go now swami ji i am doing sudarshan kriya nowadays hey bhagwan what did you hear for four years <laughs> do you have what to say a fifth grader would have more brains than that 
did you understand there is one Brahma, there is one Paramatma, there is one Bhagavan? So the highest and the closest realization of the Supreme Divinity is Bhagavan. And how will you realize his Bhagavan manifestation? Through which Kriya will you realize the Bhagavan manifestation? <laughs> which Kriya? Maharaji has just said it. Through Bhakti, through love. See in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Bhakti Arjun, as I am standing before you. Now that is the Bhagavan manifestation. As I am, only through bhakti you will understand me, janati. And Tatomam tatvato gyatva vishate tadanantaram. Through that understanding you shall enter into the secret of my being. So the path of jnana yoga, not jnana, jnana, we are also discussing jnana. The path of jnana yoga sadhana will lead to the Brahman realization. The path of Ashtang Yoga Sadhana will lead to the Paramatma realization. The path of Bhakti Sadhana will lead to Bhagavan realization. So if you want to understand God, you will need to do Bhakti, you will need to love Him. This Bhakti seems to be so simple. But actually, it's the most powerful sadhana. And why is that so? Because through bhakti, you are attracting grace. The jnani and yogi are saying, I will do it. God says, do it. And I will not grace you. You are on your own. The bhakti says, my Lord, I will do my best. But my faith is in your grace. So God says, all right, then I'm along with you, helping you along. Come on, let's do it together. Because the bhakt attracts the grace of God, that is why this bhakti sadhana becomes so powerful. Gokoti dhanam grahane shukashi Prayaga Ganga Yuta Kalpavasaha Yagyagatam Merusuvarnadanam Govindanam Nanakadapitulyam. This verse from the Supti Sudhakar says you take a scale. On one side, you put go donating one million cows in charity. One month of Kalpavas in Prayag. Millions of Ganga Snan. Etc, etc. On the other side, you put the pious merit of one saying Govind. The name of God. You put it on this side. So this verse says, all this together cannot compare with the merit of taking the name of God. Because the name of God is directly attracting His grace. And everything else is good. But without the one, it's still all zeros. That is why no sadhana can ever compare with the power of bhakti. <laughs>